Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello. Uh, today I'm joined by Alan Simpson, who is CTO at Cat and I Innovation. Hi today, Alan. Hey, good morning, Zach. I'm very well, thank you. Right. Uh, Cat and I is one of the few, if not only, revenue generating blockchain plays around. How far ahead of the pack are you in this space? Well, it's a very good question. Um, it's one of the great unknown unknowns, to quote uh, Donald Rumsfeld. Um, so I maintain a very close connection with the blockchain community to keep an eye on the technology itself and to get an indication as to what other people are doing with it. But it's obviously difficult to get too good a picture given people's sort of commercial uh, bent or confidentiality. Um, what we do know for certain is that blockchain is a very hot technology and there'll be plenty of other companies developing blockchain applications. But we've aimed to take a different approach to the rest of the pack. Most technology companies build a product that they see as the next big thing and then go to the market and try and sell it. The build it and they will come approach, if you will. But we have built a framework product that's highly modular and very customizable. Using that framework, we approached our first customer, if you will, a model client. Um, and in this case, or in the case of a regulatory inspection product, that was fired or guard, Guardian. And we've customized it to suit their specific application. This way, we not only get a product that really fits our customers' needs, but also fits the needs of lots of customers in that marketplace. So we could just cookie-cutter our product into many customers within that same industry. Moreover, if we get the design right, and I believe we have, then we can also attract other customers that operate in similar but not identical markets. So, for example, elevator inspection or fire alarm inspection are similar to fire door inspection, if not exactly the same thing, but we can still cover them with our product. Do you have any idea at this stage how big the market for your sequestrum offering is? Well, the simple answer is it's big. So Sequestrum is almost a brand name. Um, there'll be many instances of products using that name. Um, we have the first two. The first, two are, the, the first one I just mentioned um, is the regulatory inspection product. The second one is a sort of copyright um, provenance management product. But using the same basic build, building blocks, we will roll the product out across many, many sectors and solve many business problems. Um, Blockchain as a technology reduces costs and streamlines businesses as well as enabling new business mechanisms. And it does so across all sorts of industries, potentially all industries, so the, the potential market is vast. Right, this, is, this is almost a comedy question, perhaps, in terms of you know, if you actually know about technology, but uh, I will ask it anyway. How much uh, will it help catalyze perception on the stock market when investors actually understand that blockchain is not synonymous with cryptocurrency? Ah, that's the, the, the bane of my, uh, my, my life. Um, so, good question. Um, I spend quite a lot of my time explaining that cryptocurrency is just one use of blockchain. Okay, it was the first major use, but it is just that. It's a use of the technology. In many ways, it was a great first use that it's really proved the technology works and they're secure and it's robust. Um, there haven't been any breaches in the underlying blockchain technology. All the breaches around cryptocurrency have been have targeted currency exchanges or wallet implementations, whilst the underlying blockchain remains unscathed. That said, the cryptocurrency bubble has tarnished the name of blockchain, um, but I like to compare it to, say, a car. If someone if some manufacturer produces a dud model that no one likes, you don't say, well, that wheel was a bad idea, wasn't it? Or you get angry with all, all, the, all the cars in the world. Indeed. Right. I mean, uh, the other, the, following on from this, I mean, you've been uh, in this distributed ledger space in cryptography for uh, decades, perhaps many decades. Uh, how much does this experience count in terms of future development and application of uh, Cat and I's business model? So, uh, uh, cryptography has been around for a long time, even longer than me. Um, Julius Caesar was using ciphers in 49 BC. Um, and we all use cryptography every day. For example, when we see the little padlock icon on a website, or we make a mobile telephone call, or indeed we make a, a contactless card payment. Um, so, it's well and truly embedded in our everyday life. 
to the extent where we just don't even notice it. Um, blockchain is based on the same mathematics, the same mathematical principles as all modern day cryptography is. Um, so I expect blockchain to become just as embedded over time, again, to the extent where we, we won't even know it's there. Um, I can actually envisage someday blockchain technologies being just as pervasive as the internet is today. Well, you've just announced a significant con construction uh, tech contract, which you've just discussed. Uh, how much capacity and how much scalability do you have in your business, given that you're still a relatively small company? So our scale is directly controlled by our revenue and proportional to the success in, in the marketplace. The technology itself is theoretically infinitely scalable. Like it's like a cloud solution. You can just keep throwing more hardware at it. Um, and scaling out the technologies to sort of enhance, build new products, perfect products, um, is, is a case of building technology teams. And that's kind of my bread and butter. I've done it many times over my career. Right. Uh, finally, um, you've had a good start to 2019. Are there any timelines currently visible that uh, you can see for the rest of the year? Yeah, so uh, it, it, it has been a very good start to, to, to the year. Uh, it seemed like a long month already. Um, so the, the successful start of that year was a result of a lot of hard work and a lot of planning last year. Um, we, we have a very strong management team who believe that the foundations we laid last year will lead to a great product, great success going forward. Um, we have our two product verticals that I've mentioned, um, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. We see huge numbers of other verticals over the near horizon. Um, and I know that building those new products as we identify those new opportunities, opportunities will keep me going for a long time to come. Um, uh, that said, I'm sure we'll make specific announcements of, of, of goals uh, set and reached as, as, uh, as, as time goes on. So but it's, it's really, at the moment, the regulation and, and validation that, the, that you're, you're focusing on? Uh, it, it is at the moment, but those are the two verticals that um, have, have more or less landed in our lap. As you mentioned, we're a small organisation. We, we have to uh, choose the, the opportunities that we see as, as the low-hanging fruit. Those are a couple that we've identified as of now. Will that change and grow in the next coming months? Yes, of course it will. Alan Simpson, Chief Technology Officer at Cat9 Innovation, thank you very much indeed. You're welcome. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.